In this Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to show you how to play around with the quick selection tool and a couple of playful, creative graphic solutions. You'll see what I mean in a minute. That was a weird uh, introduction. But I'm going to go to File and Open. And on my desktop, I'm going to find my Chapter 6 folder and Quick Selections. I have two images here, so I'll start below and drag up and I'll open those. So I've got this simple backdrop, just a simple eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. And I've got our little sculpture we want to select and cut out from this little game room that my friend had. So since I have most of this as a dark object against a lighter background, my quick selection tool would work great for that. Your magic wand, if you clicked, it would only select part of these values. Command D. So I'm going to switch to my quick selection tool. Remember, it's Command D on a Mac or Control D to deselect on a PC. So here's my quick selection tool. I'm going to quickly as the tool is called, quickly drag just inside the boundaries of this character here. Go all the way around. And I can instantly see I'm going to have some problems. Because when I zoom in, right here, his hood is the same color as this staircase railing. That's not going to work. I'm going to have a big bar sticking out of his head. So if that happens, you go back to your quick selection, hold your option or alt key for the minus, and you start stripping this off right up to the edge where you want it to go. I'll hold option and strip all that off or alt key on a PC. I don't want his hood going right up into this big bar. It'll look like somebody stabbed him in the head. So I hold my option or alt key I just go right around that edge. If I see any little flickering details, I keep holding Option or Alt key and I just keep stripping those out and stripping those out right here. Now it cut into his hood, so I go over it again. But now Photoshop's gonna remember I wanted it to stop there and that's pretty cool for this tool to remember where I've been. That's awesome. Hold my space bar for the hand tool. We'll come down here. And it kind of went into this little base right here. So again, I'm going to hold my Option or Alt key. We'll start stripping off some of these values right down in here. I don't like that it went up there. I wish it came down to here. So I click and drag again. And there we go. I've got a nice selection, nice quick selection around this character. But I want to make sure he's going to look good before I actually cut him out. So as I've shown in a demo before, you stay on your selection tool and you click select and mask. I know I'm going to be adding him to a black background anyway, so I might as well view him before I ever cut him out. I'll click up above. I don't have any loose hairs, so I don't need to do edge detection. What I would like to do is carve a little bit off the edges. So I shift the edge to the negative, about negative six or seven. I'm going to add a little feather. Feather means blur. So you can see if I do a little bit, his edges become a little softer. If I do a lot, his edges become really weird and kind of creepy. So we'll do a little bit of feathering and a little bit of contrast on that. And that will help clean up some of these edges. So that's going to look pretty good for what I want. I'm going to keep that a selection. I don't need to decontaminate any colors. We're not talking about loose hairs. I'll click OK. And now I switch to my move tool. I'm going to move him all the way up wait a second and drop him in okay obviously he's too big so command t to transform on a mac that would be control t to transform on a pc and i'll just drag this corner down a little bit like that 
and then move in and move him back into the center. Maybe I can go out and rotate him a little bit right there. Just so he kind of floats on this page. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter on my PC or return on my Mac to accept that. But he looks kind of yellow. Okay, so I'm going to go to image menu, auto color. That'll strip out some of that yellow. I like that. That's good. Cool. Nice little touch. Okay, what I want is since this is a uh, Star Wars character, I want stars in the background. And here's a fun little trick. Okay, when I'm done with photo number one, I can close it. I don't need to save it. Here's my new layout. I'll go to my background. But in order to do this trick, you need to start with a separate file. And this is very important. I'm going to go to image, or I'm sorry, file menu, new document. Okay, I will click on print and I'll click on letter, eight and a half by 11. But the key to this trick is lowering your resolution just to 72 pixels per inch. The way you make stars is on a low resolution file, 72. I'll click create and now I'll just zoom in a little bit. D for default colors and in order to fill this brand new file with solid black on a Mac, I hold my option key and I hit the big delete key. On a PC that would be alt and backspace, just a solid black layer. You still have black and white so now what you do is go to filter, noise, add noise. And I wanna keep this on monochromatic. I don't want a bunch of colors here. I just want black and white. We'll keep it on Gaussian and I'll crank that up to about 60 or so. When I click okay, and I zoom in, the noise just turned every pixel into random colors like that, okay? No big deal. I'll zoom back out by dragging to the left. And now, instead of individual little boxes, I wanna blur them. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Now, I don't want it to totally disappear, so I'm gonna type in 1.5 and what that's going to do is basically treat it like a gray carpet so now when i zoom in again they're not individual boxes they're just blurred values like a gray carpet here's where you make stars image menu adjustments levels this tells you the values that are in this photo. This is pretty much a big dark gray image. That spike on this graph hovers over the dark gray values. That's true. What I'm going to do is take this little triangle representing black and I'm going to squeeze that in till almost everything disappears like that. Then I'm going to take this triangle, which represents all the whites, and I crush those values together like that. We'll pull in a little more black, and I get just a few little stars right there. Cool. I'll click OK. Now all I have to do is jump back to this file. I'll turn off the top layer just so we can see our background. I want to start right there. I come back over to this photo and with my move tool, I'm just going to move it straight up to my file. Wait a second. Drag it back in. And I'm going to line it up with that upper left corner. Command T to transform on a Mac, that would be control T on a PC. And I just drag the corner out. Just make it a little bit bigger than your file like that. 
hit enter or return on your Mac. Now I can turn on Darth Maul. Ha ha. There we go. Okay, what I want to do is add a galaxy now. This is going to look cool. I go to layer two. I add a brand new layer. Let's call this layer galaxy. Okay, all I need to do now again is turn off this one so I can see what I'm doing on my galaxy. Instead of black and white, I'm going to click here and make red and white. Let's just see what these clouds are going to look like. I'm going to go to filter, render, clouds. You can't do difference clouds when the layer is empty. You have to start with clouds. Okay. That looks a little too small. So here's what I'm going to do. Now let, let's keep that. What the heck? I'll, I'll have a different idea for this. I'm kind of formulating ideas as I go. Okay, there's my clouds. But why do a galaxy when it's just going to cover up my stars? So in Photoshop, you have blending modes. I'm going to screen through my galaxy so I can see the stars. Okay, but I don't want just red. So I'm going to click on this red. And I'm going to change it to the opposite on the color wheel, green. I'll come down into these darker greens right down in here. And I'll click OK. Once you have applied a cloud filter, now you can go to Filter Menu, Render Difference Clouds. These are stormier clouds. Okay. Once you've applied that, you're going to keep mixing them right up here. Filter, difference clouds again. Filter, difference clouds again. Filter, difference clouds again. We'll do it one more time. Difference clouds again. I like that. Okay, what I don't like is so much of this detail. So here's the trick. Okay, that's why I was thinking earlier. I'm going to take my magnifying tool, drag to the left, really make it small. Then I switch to my move tool. Command T on a Mac or Control T to transform on a PC. And to keep this centered, I hold my Option or Alt key. And now when I drag a corner, I can just blow up the size of the galaxy right there I hit return or enter now when I turn on Darth Maul we've got this galaxy see I can move it around or I can say you know what I like these colors I just don't want it filling the whole thing so here's what I do I create a layer mask I want to erase some parts of this galaxy so right there add layer mask one time d for default colors x to switch to black and you take a large soft brush here's my brush i go into the file control key and option key and i'll drag to the right Make a big brush like that. Okay, then I just start scraping away. But what I don't want to do is this. I don't want to scrape the entire galaxy away like that. So I'll go to edit and undo. What I'm going to do with my brush is right up here. Instead of the opacity being 100%, I'm going to lower that down to about 30 25 to 30, right around in there. Okay, now when I click and drag, I lightly scrape. I click and drag, click and drag, click and drag, click and drag. And now I can kind of sculpt out my own galaxy right here. Maybe we'll take out some of that and we'll take out some of this red and some of this down in the corner here. 
and we'll take out some of that. So I have a galaxy just where I want it to show up. If I scraped away too much like this, I hit X for white and I paint some of that back in right there. So now I control the universe. X for black and I scrape some of that out right there. Don't want all that right there. I get just a hint of a galaxy right in there. X for white and we put some of that back in right down in there. And now I control the overall look of this galaxy formation. Okay, the only other thing I'm gonna do for Darth here is I'm gonna click on the top layer all the way to the right. I can double click. That brings up my layer styles. And I'm gonna give him a outer glow. Remember, don't click on the checkbox, click on the words. Okay, right up here. I want this to be set to multiply for dark colors. Right here, I want this to be black. Very appropriate for a Sith Lord. And now I've got a size and a spread. See, if these are both to the left, you're barely going to see anything. I spread it out a little bit. And now I drag the size and it'll start to reappear. I can drag the darkness up a little more. I can drag the spread out a little more. But now I start to get a nice kind of dark glow around this character. Remember, multiply works for dark colors. Let's say you wanted a red glow. You set this to screen or normal, but I would recommend screen. Now you switch from black to red and you've got a totally different glow. Okay. Okay. These modes right here from lighten to lighter color are for brighter colors or lighter colors. These ones are for darker colors. That's why it says dark. So multiply works great for dark colors. You see just a hint of red or screen mode. Pick a color that you like. I'll click here and go even darker. So it kind of fades out a little more, not so overwhelming. I can change the spread right here to get it to be just a little bit of a subtle glow. A little bit of the size right there. And I click OK. There we go. Take my move tool. We'll just move them around. Get them nice and centered right there. And there's our image. A lot better than that boring picture that we had before. I can close that up. Don't need to save it. This is the one I want to save. Okay. Create your own galaxy. Have fun with it. Really set him out in that scene. And there we go. Lots of fun stuff to play with here in Photoshop. So I'm going to go to File, Save a Copy. I will call this Last Name, First Name, Quick Selections. I want to save that as a JPEG now that I'm done. Always on the desktop. And I'll save it as a high quality JPEG. There we go. Use whatever colors you want around him. Green, red, black, white. Doesn't matter to me. Try it out. See how they work. My main goal is play with Photoshop. Have fun with it. Be creative. All right. And dare I say, may the force be with you always.